Everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive Home on IC Radio. In the town of Geraldine, Alabama, we're your source for news and entertainment. You find us on television two different ways. North Alabama, Channel 182 on Charter Communications. You can find us worldwide on Abundant TV, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Thank you so much for listening. You know you're the apple of my eye. <laughs> you definitely are. So thank you again. I know you could be doing anything else, but you're watching us. I've got Lisa Kincaid with me right now. We're going to be talking with her about the homeless situation that's going on. It's, it's not just everywhere else. It's in our own back door now. But I wanted to mention, and this is another reason I wanted to mention this advertiser is my pillow, and uh, Mike Lindell. And do you know he used to be a drug addict? No, this, uh, I yes, never even knew used that. to be. So you can see it's kind of a hologram. This is you can perfect. see a picture of him right here. You can turn things around, but you've got to wanna. That's exactly and, uh, right. There are many ways you can do it, but any kind of a Christ filled ministry will actually get you to that point a lot quicker and a better way. And that's actually why the government and the media tax him so much mm -hmm. because he's anything to do with christ yeah they're, they're, they're all they're attacking it mm -hmm. but you can get this book for free um any order that you place with my mypillow.com make sure you use the code donna d-o-n-n-a and that'll get you some half price as a matter of fact some of the things are more than half off so you're getting a good deal and you're getting a great read right here when you read this book because you know a lot of us have been a little bit snooty about you know somebody makes wrong decisions you know but we're only a breath way, just one breath from making the wrong decision, being out with the wrong crowd, being whatever. And so you have, and you have some, go ahead and read some scriptures for us that you put, that you planned for us. Lisa Kincaid. Well, one of my favorite ones um, is Matthew 22. Um, the, the first and greatest commandment, Donna, is for us to love the Lord with all our heart, our soul, and mind. Um, but the second one is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's pretty hard to do. Some of us are in love with ourselves. Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> I'm not. It's not yeah, I know that's right. Um, but, you know, that's the first two. Those are the two greatest commandments is to love the Lord first and then love his people. Everything else just falls into place. That's exactly right. And like I was uh, talking the other day, I was saying that you know, the denominations this and denominations that and traditions this and traditions that and rules of this and rules of that can't do this, can't do that. You know, now, if people would just learn to love God, love God's people, it's really that easy, okay? Really that easy. <laughs> People don't get it. They want to put stipulations on yeah, everything. Make it tough. Uh, yeah, you can't wear this. You can't do that. Blah blah blah. Now, I mean, there is a transformation when you you'll love the Lord, the right and things. you'll want to do the right things. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and God will show you what the right things are. He'll show you that on a personal level. He'll show you that. Um, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> but. You know, the, the greatest thing is, is to love him first, love God, love God's people. I have a TikTok account where I do a lot of ministering on TikTok. And that's one of the things that I just simplify everything that people want to make so complex. Mm -hmm. They get on there or they preach and they talk about all these things that is way over lost people's heads. I'm like, guys. We got to keep this simple. Love God, love God's people. It's that easy. Everything else will fall into place. Now, what I love about the Bible is that there are so many things in there that, like, for instance, to love one another occurs 100 times in the New Testament. 100 times. So what that tells me, that's pretty important. It wouldn't be in there 100 times if it wasn't that important, okay? To love one another, all right? And Jesus gave Peter 
he, when he was speaking to Peter in John 21, Jesus gave Peter three, a threefold command, and his command was, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Well, Lord, you know. And Peter was even getting frustrated on that last one. He's like, Lord, you know I love you. What, what's all this about? He says, I need you to feed my sheep. It's that easy. If you love me, you're going to feed my sheep. So when I was driving through Huntsville, I worked for a company out there, the city. And when you work for another company, you can't really just stop when you want to. So I happened to pass these homeless this homeless community. Now there was three of them at that time. No, there were that many. Three different spots uh -huh. with about a hundred people in each one. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So when I was driving by there, I couldn't stop. It was an unauthorized stop. Sure. So I was like, eh, well. So I just let it go. So, but that ate on me for about a year. Well, I went and bought my car, started transporting myself, brokered through two of the brokers here in Alabama, and they started sending me my rides. And I always made a comment on Facebook that God is my dispatcher, okay, because I didn't really so, have... So this opened up more doors for you, more opportunities. Yes, because I could put Bibles in the back of my car, in my back seat, where they sat, whoever wanted one could take one. We could have conversations. I could pray with them. I could pray for them. We could stop and bring them to Jesus. You know, I mean, just opened a lot of doors. So I went past the Huntsville homeless camp again, and I, I slammed those brakes on. I said, I'm not passing this up this time. And that's when I stopped, and I went out there. And, of course, nobody came out because they didn't know who I was, and I didn't care how many times I shouted. One man came out, and he was, of that particular camp, he was the man to come out. He was the one that came out and confronted whoever was there. Once they get to know you, though, everybody will come out. <laughs> you well, pop they, open We have their to be heads. careful, but some are there for reasons that, I mean, we don't know about, we don't know someone's life and what took them to that point, but it could be a, a, a woman who's running away from an abuser. That's, and that's the only shelter she can find, or it could be someone who's been in trouble. Right, right. After. There's, there's several reasons. We like to say, um, my team and I, we like to say every face has a story. Because every face has a story out there. They're not all there because they want to be there. There's not very many drug addicts. People think, oh, they're, they're all just on drugs. And that's not true. There, probably out of a hundred people at one particular camp, there might be eight people there oh, that are on drugs. Not near what the media might tell. Not near exactly. Don't believe the media. But most of them are there. We have a lot of PTSD men from the military that can't hold jobs, mm -hmm. so they can't pay bills. They can't function. They get a check, but the check isn't enough for them to live on. Well, and they can't even pay their own bills. So they, they're there. And it's funny because some of them play guitars, they play music. Mm -hmm. So at any given time when I go out there to feed and hand out stuff, you know, Jared might be over there playing his guitar and mm -hmm. I'll sit down on a rock. They serenade you. And just listen to them playing. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they all are very talented. One of them is a poet. He writes poetry. You know, um, but there again, he's PTSD. You know, then you do, you've got some of your women that are in hiding, some of your men that are in hiding, you know, from the law or whatever. Um, but most of them have some type of PTSD or mental health issue that they're not getting the help that they need. Um, so all we do is go there and just love on them love on them, take them the things they need while they're in that situation and try to bring them to Jesus. What are some of the things they need? Oh, good grief. Because I mean, Socks. About, oh, yeah, because, and, and let's talk about this. We're in Alabama, so four seasons in one day. We've exactly. all experienced that before. So we can have just hot, humid weather one day, turn right around and have freezing cold weather. Yep. We, yep. And, and it's not as easy to predict 
the spring summer anymore mm -hmm. or the the winter fall and yeah. so there's some things you probably need on hand just in case exactly i always carry socks with me always i always wear i always carry t-shirts short sleeves and long sleeves i just gave out friday i just gave out probably 18 long sleeve v-neck t-shirts mm -hmm. you know because winter's not here but at any given time when it starts raining really hard and that wind starts mm -hmm. whipping up it gets chilly that when you're used cold. to the heat mm -hmm. so they slip those shirts on mm -hmm. some of them sleep in them mm -hmm. at night because the temperature drops down a little bit uh, Alabama is really strange for that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it can drop down into the 50s, but be 90 in the day, you know. So, you know, um, I gave uh, one lady from my church, uh, Bobby Joe. she brought me a box of solar-powered radios, the old cranks that's got the cranks with them. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. They had so much fun with those when I was handing uh -huh. them out. They're all like, Kennedy's out there acting like he's fishing. <laughs> but um, they need stuff like that, you know, uh, flashlights, batteries on top of batteries, hygiene, lots of hygiene. So most people will give cash from church or whatever. They'll be like, here, Lisa, go buy them what they need, you know. And I will actually go shopping for them to buy. And businesses could do that as well and write off on your taxes. Exactly, exactly. So um, that's kind of a big deal for us is just to make sure. And the food, we carry non-perishables, a lot of the canned stuff, because they build fires. They can cook. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just, but it's got to be the can, not necessarily the can opener, but you can just flip the top. Yes, just the little pop tops are real easy mm -hmm. for them. I carry them a lot of um, peanut butter stuff. Now, I'm bad because I'll carry a lot of, sweets too yeah with me. should we do that because kids? not really um but because you know, like peanuts and stuff like that but yeah like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i'll i'll carry them you know gummies or whatever mm -hmm. tootsie tootsie rolls or you know twizzlers mm -hmm. stuff like that because anybody that does come by to feed mm -hmm. or any place they do get to won't give them that stuff. Everybody's nutrition, nutrition, yeah. nutrition. So when I show up with like some Twizzlers, or uh -huh. they're all like, oh, it's out here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I we give bags of just good food, hand wipes, um, sanitary yeah. wipes, hand wipes. Has, has COVID hit that community? or do you know? Believe it or not, COVID has not hit any of them. You know why? It's probably because I don't listen to the news. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, well, and they're all outdoors, too. Outdoors True. makes a big difference. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't get COVID for the whole two years. I got COVID this past January, and do you know why? That's when I got it. Because I went back to church. <laughs> I actually went back to my big church. I uh -huh. was going to a smaller church uh -huh. that was kind of a barn outdoors, uh -huh. so there wasn't a lot of that going on. But when I actually went indoors to my big church, uh -huh. um, yeah, that's when I got. That's when I got the COVID. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Mm-hmm." Because that would devastate that community if, if everybody got COVID. Mm -hmm. It would because there's only so many. I think there's only like one clinic out there that even treats them. Mm -hmm. You know, I free of about charge. That, if there were any kind of medical facilities that would help. Not really. A lot of times they just have to go right into the hospital, and then they do what they got to do and throw them right back out. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's not many programs. Now, Chattanooga's got a little better program going on for their homeless community, but they're twice the size of Huntsville's homeless. Huntsville has about 200 to 300 homeless. Chattanooga's got twice that many. But they've got the soup kitchen, the police department, the clinic, mm -hmm. and everything is all right there in one square. And then their tents are all down the road, all up and down in the field areas and stuff. So Lisa Kincaid with me right now. We always think of, oh, it's New York, it's Chicago, it's Chattanooga, it's Huntsville. Do we have that in our own back door in DeKalb County and in Marshall County, say, or Jackson? We do have homeless here. However, being the smaller towns, 
they don't let them stay here. They'll, they'll send them to Huntsville or Chattanooga. They won't let them stay because there's no programs here. Now, I've been trying to reach out to people. I'm looking for a location for a home that I can possibly start a program. And, and the program is not to aid them in what they're doing, but to give them a program and some skills maybe to get up and get out. The PTSD, get the medication they need to control that. You know, things like that. Um, computers, having computers available where they can go online, you know, and fill out a resume or, because everything is online these days. So they don't have access to getting decent jobs because they don't have access to the computers. Well, you know, some of the, the jobs that, you know, you work with your hands, you're a welder, or you, you know, a lot of those, all you need is a certificate, mm -hmm. you know, in order to be, to be able to better yourself. And there are some businesses, and I'm going to give you a couple of connections. One is Randall Pound, who's with Cairo's Prison Ministry. Okay. And then Sherry Height, who's with the Alabama Services, is Family Services of, of North Alabama. Those two might be able to help because they're offering a program where they train people, you know, like, you know, teach a person to fish, you know. Absolutely. And that's what they have, the programs they have put together, and they have received the grants and things. To, and, and it's all like a community working together, and these mm -hmm. folks are local. One's in Fort Payne, one's in Alabama. Oh, awesome. So, awesome. so yeah. that might be some of the steps you need. How about assistance on helping you write grants? Um, could, would that be something that could That would be out? something great for, for me. Uh, the ministry that I've had for years is called God Does It. Um, I've got I've got a couple of books online about how God does it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of them is called Short Stories of How God Does It. Because I'm kind of ADHD and my attention span isn't real long. <laughs> so I've written short stories for people like me. Uh, just things that God has done in my is this life personally. Form? It is online on Amazon. Okay, I won't. Um, because I have the same issue. It's pretty I bet you neat. Guess that. <laughs> but what it is 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 it's short stories of how God does it, so that people can read this and then learn to recognize when God is mm -hmm. is um, intervening in your life. And I mean, there's one called the tree, one called the balloon, one called the angel. And, and it's just miraculous stories of what God had done in my life. Because you waited. And, and, and one of them was I was even apologizing because I stayed too long somewhere during a Christian function. And the temperature in Texas was going to drop that day to about 20 degrees by 2 or 3 o'clock. Well, I wanted to stay longer, so I stayed for church instead of getting up and leaving that morning because I had been there all weekend mm -hmm. and riding home in nice 80 degree weather. Mm -hmm. I stayed because I wanted to fellowship with my friends longer. Mm -hmm. And that story is in the book, and it is, it's a miraculous story. I can't even tell it this many years later without crying mm -hmm. because of what God had done just to show me Hey, daughter, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here and I got you. Well, you know, it's easy to give up. I mean, we've all mm -hmm. been in situations before where something just, it's almost like a, a, a volcano erupts. And Absolutely. you don't know how to take it all in. You know, you know where do I start? How do I, how do I get this? That's why you really need to go to MyPillow.com. This book right here could really help you out in, in your ministry if you're, if you're helping other people as well. That this guy grew from, from mm -hmm. having nothing and that's another thing he talks about in the book about his family just gave up on him. They were just like, no, we can't. You can't keep stealing from us. You can't keep doing this. Right. Because, again, he was a drug addict. But, mm -hmm. but there's help around there. Around the, just If you just look for it and you'll accept it, right? Right. Right. And that's the key. And, and you kind of can tell when, when you meet with the people. You know, like I had said earlier about the, the two transvestites that are out there. I love them with all my heart. And they wear dresses, I mean, the whole nine yards. And one's name is Eric, and he calls himself Erica. And the other one is Brandon, and he calls himself Brandy. 
when I address them while I'm out there, I call them Erica and Brandy. And I love them. And I'll hug on them and bring them what they need. You know, I don't speak the Bible to them because those types of people have had the Bible shoved down their throat since they were early teenagers in a bad way. You know, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. Well, there's ways you, you know, can present things without it. Because if somebody comes at me and they're trying to prove a point to me and they're yelling at me, they're screaming right. at me, I'm, I'm going to turn a deaf ear. Exactly. And I think other people do the same thing. And that's kind of like, you know, um, I, when I was young, I had uh, someone in my family that was supposedly real Christian, but I saw her stealing horses and horse trading and just People doing some them. bad things. And I was young. I was a 16, 17-year-old girl. And I was watching this, and I thought, and I can't tell you how many times in my mind that I said to myself, if that's what God is about, I don't I, want it. I have to. I don't want it. And I guarantee you that these guys, um, Eric and Brandon, have had the same experiences, just shoved down their throat and, and beat to no end. And I, so I don't speak it to them. Well, I think when we're trying to help people sometimes, and maybe it's intentional, we try to do the Reader's Digest version of it. Right. You know, instead of like walking them through because I'm the, I'm a simple person. You need to give it to me in small doses. Yeah, yeah right, <laughs> so, right. So giving things to people in small doses sometimes without trying to throw the whole book at them all at one time, right. that's overwhelming. It is. It's very overwhelming. And that's something I try to tell our Christians who are out there ministering. I always tell them, tell them to start in Matthew. Don't. Everybody goes, oh, I tried reading that book. I tried reading it from the front to the, to the back. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's bad news. No wonder you don't want anything to do with it. You know, you can't understand it. It's overwhelming. It is. It's very overwhelming. So I just love on these people and show them the love of Christ. And I might walk through those camps and I've got my hand out and I'm praying over their tents. And they've come to know me, so they know who I am. They're like, oh, there goes Lisa again. And some of them are Miss Lisa, Miss Lisa, and they'll come from the back side of the camp for me to pray with them. No one, they just don't hug them. Care. Right, You're and not there's just a there difference. For photo walk. Right, and there's a difference because Christmas time, all these old gals in these Cadillacs are showing up and <laughs> just trying to do their. Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing my thing for Christmas. I'm uh -huh. being good. No, I want to see you there in March, April, May, June, July. Mm -hmm. you know, I want to see you then. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just see you at Christmas time going, oh, I'm doing my goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I want to see you all of the months. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see you sitting out there crying with them. I want to see you bringing them something, bandaging their feet. My partner, Sherry, she's a nurse. She will get down on her hands and knees and go to washing their feet. Men, women, it doesn't matter. Washing their feet and bandaging them up because they've been without shoes. That's, for two a, that's weeks. another point because like in the summertime we go barefoot a lot. Mm -hmm. And and you're you're gonna get calluses on the bottom of your feet. I don't care how pretty you are, you're gonna get some bad feet. That's but exactly if you right. live your life all year long with no shoes, no socks, that's gotta do some damage. Sure it does. Oh, it's terrible. The the last time her and I were out there, one of the men and he was a newcomer to the camp. Mm -hmm. And one of the men had not had shoes for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And when we showed up out there, we were lucky that we had shoes to fit him. But Sherry got down there on her hands and knees, and she's down there washing his feet and bandaging them up, you know, salving them and putting stuff on them to heal them up and bandaging them. And then we gave him some shoes, you know, that would fit his feet. And I'm telling you, that right there, now every time we show up, here comes that man. Where's Sherry? Mm -hmm. Where's Miss Sherry? Mm -hmm. You know? People remember those things. And again, that's leading by example. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's the love of Christ. That's what they need to see. Because they ask, mm -hmm. you know, why are you so different? You know, you're different. You're different than the others that come out here. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get used to different. They say on The Chosen, the Difference movies are good. chosen. <laughs> Difference yeah. good. That's We've right. We've got a little bit, almost three minutes left in this segment. 
Is there something you'd like to make sure everybody understands before you leave today? Well, I would like everybody to understand that the homeless that are out there, they're, they're, we all could be there. We all could be there. You, you know, can make a dumb decision and be out with the wrong crowd. Many things can happen. You know, a crash in the stock market. You know, anything uh -huh. can cost my job loss. Anything. I always tell people, look, we could all just be a paycheck away from that you situation. You know, the supply chain the way it is right now, a lot of folks could suffer because of the supply chain. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. People have been losing jobs left and right because when COVID started, I mean, we all know what that did. They were shutting down everything, you know. So there were a lot of people. I don't care how much government money they said was out there for these homeowners that lost their homes. I'm sorry, it doesn't come the way they try to say it does. It doesn't come that way. The people that are out there in the in the homeless, trying to get their you know their checks, their PTSD, their military checks, their seen their um, social security checks. You know, it doesn't come the way everybody portrays it to come, and it doesn't. There's always a last. The, the real side. That's real right. Story. That's right. And these people, they all have a story. They all have a name, and it's our job as Christ lovers to love God, love God's people. It's that easy, guys. It's that easy. Lisa, um, almost a minute and a half left in the sun, saying, I told you it would fly by. Um, how can folks get materials to you if they're about to donate? How can they get in contact with you? And um, Jeannie Payton owns the Alabama Betting Store up on 68, up on the mountain, Lookout Mountain. And most people take stuff there because yeah. that's where my storage building is. I've got a big storage building there. And I go in and get what I need as I need it. Uh -huh. But a lot of people bring stuff to there. Um, they'll send checks to my address, which is 1705 Alabama Avenue, Southwest, Fort Payne. And if you don't put the Southwest on there, it's going yeah. to the other end of town. Because there's a northwest. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. Then I'll never see it. So, 35967. So, I've been getting checks in the mail. And, and it's just love offerings to go. Because there's some things you can't get donated. Like ladies' panties and mm -hmm. underwear and bras. Think about sanitary things. Sanitary things, things, like things items. Too. Yes, absolutely. those things I purchased. Lisa, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank it's you. It's been awesome. I told you it'd fly by. Yes, thank you so much awesome. for watching I Say Radio in the town of Geraldine, Alabama. We are your source for news and entertainment. You can find us also on television, local TV, channel 182 on Charter Communications. Worldwide, we're found on Abundant TV, which is also shown on Roku, Apple, and Amazon Fire. Again, thank you so much, and please donate. Thank we you. definitely appreciate that. Okay, folks, good to see ya.